Um, this is uh, Monday night, the 26th. Uh, at six o'clock is the meeting of the permanent Norton Permanent Building Committee. All members are present. The architects representative and the OPM is present. Um, Steve Hornsby is present. Beth's on. Beth is on, and some representatives from the COA. Okay, not the friends of the COA, so I don't get that confused. Um, First thing is, I guess, approve the minutes. Has everybody got a copy of the minutes? Yep. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll, say I'll accept the motion. Second. Kevin seconds it. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, so moved. Um, <coughs> next on the agenda is correspondence. The only thing, well, I get the vouchers every couple of days and stuff. I'm signing those. I'm in and out of the town hall three or four times a week. Um, also, I asked Beth at one of our construction meetings. Um, we had, well, actually, we had at our last meeting, it's probably incomplete work from our last meeting, we asked Beth to make a choice of colors for the bricks. I asked her to send us a letter um, she sent a letter saying she would like the red brick color bricks, and uh, so I guess we're accepting them as such. And the only reason I asked for it early is the earlier we order them, the earlier we find out if we A, get them and get the right amount and put the order in because there is uh, sometimes a lag time between order and receipt. Um, what? So that's Redwood. We released this to Middle a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And she yeah. requested it be in it was like mind. It was like the yeah. week. Yeah. It was within yeah. seven or eight days from the meeting. I know I <laughs> pounced on her okay. right, right away. Whether or not it's been ordered. Did you want to say anything, Beth, about that? Or? things that are related. Uh, first of all, it uh, makes me sad to have to announce this, that uh, Bob Medeiros has passed away. Um, his announcements of stuff will be later on this week. Um, and in keeping with that, at the select board meeting, one of three I attended, um, somebody mentioned to me about putting the past members on the plaque. And I said, well, we voted not to do that. We discussed it. I remember discussing it here. I don't remember the, the reasons, although I think one of them was we weren't going to put every past selectman on there who may have been on the board of selectmen while the projects were going on. But uh, with Bob passing away, and uh, I would uh, entertain the motion to ask the architect. I've, I've asked um, Bob, I'll get my name straight. Um, he says the final has not been put in. We're still waiting for the subcontractor for the town seals. I would ask a motion from the floor to include the past two members of the building committee. Which is Bob and Dinah. And Dinah. I'll make a motion. I mean, they, they're just as part of this as the rest of us. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll second. Okay, thank you very much. Um, in that, we're going to change the plaque with those two names. So it is official. Um, other than that, uh, I wasn't done, but go ahead. For the senior center. For the seniors. <laughs> well, I think it would be both. Well, I think the I plaques mean. are going to be yeah, basically be the same, just a different topic at the top. Yeah. Just, yeah. both buildings. just clarifying. <laughs> yes. Yes, I, well, I will go to Bob. Okay. <laughs> uh, both plaques are going to be basically the same. They're similar, very similar. 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 
And there's still time for both of them. Yes. That's that that your question. Just clarify. Yes. Oh, okay, that's what I'm here to do. Okay. Uh, uh, <coughs> we had the issue about the polls, which I think Steve will go into a little bit deeper. Um, I started out, oh, who knows, probably six weeks ago, going to the Board of Selectmen, trying to get, not get any polls um, approved, and I got accused of trying to hold National Grid hostage. So they would they went ahead and approved the the polls for another project at the meeting, but took note of my concerns. Um, and there was a representative there named Steve Silver, I believe, uh, who had a lot of knowledge about what we were doing um, and sort of verified some of the timelines and everything else, but couldn't do anything. Well, the town couldn't do anything without the application from National Grid, which had to be in within three days of the Board of Selectmen's meeting in order to get out the one week notice to the abutters. And that didn't happen because the next week, National Grid proceeded to drive um, Mike units to counseling because they had uh, the wrong location. They had, it, they had the polls on Old Colony Road. Then they had only one poll then they so after about nine emails back and forth to Mike, he got them straightened out, but we had to wait for the next select board meeting. And at that meeting, something got delayed, and I don't know what it was. So we had to wait for the next meeting, which was last week. The select board finally approved the two polls, but, uh, and we went to National Grid and told them it's been approved and we're waiting and all the construction's done and I'll let Steve go in deeper as far deep into the weeds as he wants to go. Would you like to do that now or later? I can, I mean, um, our understanding right now is that the, I think it was the, the 15th select board meeting on the 15th, they finally got their paperwork together and, and correct and Obviously, it was it was approved for National Grid for two poles, <clears throat> one on the site, one on the other side of the street, because that's the way they uh, National Grid designed the the service. Um, after we got confirmation of that, we started sending our contacts on at National Grid emails as far as okay, we understand the poles are approved. When you're going to install them. Um, the latest I got uh, from our contact was that the two poles would be installed the week of March 11th. However, Mike Units got an email from someone else that said it'll be the end of this week. So I'm going to be conservative and say it's probably in the middle of March. When they come the end of this week, it's all the better. So if I can, add, they they couldn't even order the transformers until the poles were installed, right? They can't. That, no, they we as much as and we, we sort of knew this, but as much as yeah. we try to use the you know you've been delaying us, maybe we can guilt them into getting something there. They have once the pole gets set, the final section of the duct bank, the underground conduit, has to be opened up. Uh, the 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 conduits installed, then it has to be inspected by. National Grid's inspector and the local inspector, and then they'll be, we'll be able to start pushing them for setting the transformer. But the transformer pad is there and has been there for a while and has been inspected, so we don't have to wait for that portion of it. Once that gets set, then we have to start chasing them for the overhead wiring crew and then the underground wiring crew, which uh, I mean we'll just keep. We'll keep on that as think, quickly as we can. If, if I can, Mr. Chair, uh, I think Jim coming to the select board meeting um, and discussing this on uh, it was an issue with another poll. I think him bringing it up initially, um, I think helped push this extremely. I mean, I, I think we would have been waiting still at this point if he didn't come to that meeting. So I just want to thank Jim for that. Thank you. There's another part of this though because the. 
there's one more pole that has to be in, installed, right. which is for the uh, telecoms, and that's from Verizon. <clears throat> and Verizon, uh, they their procedure was to have a license agreement, which was signed by the town manager. That was sent back last week, and the uh, message I got from them was that they were now sending it to engineering. So we're, we're basically doing the same thing with Verizon, as far as continually hounding them for when they're going to put the pole in, because we can't bring in cable, internet, anything without it. You know, it affects, it affects the, uh, the management system. A lot of cable. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Right. So, yeah. oh, okay. so. so that's that's the that's the whole story. That's not the whole story, but that's the story I'm sticking to. I have some addendums to it. I would like to thank Steve Howitt. Um, I happen to run uh, help run the men's senior breakfast for the senior center, and last Wednesday, uh, Representative Howitt came up to me and tried to zing me and ask me how the polls were doing, which is not a hard subject for me to talk about. Um, and I said, we're working on it. And at the very minute I said something, he was texting his aide to try to get something. So he's, as much as I've been on it, he's been on it. And I'll just say some other networking I've done through my contacts have been on it. Um, we can only as one of the OPM said to me, it's all means and methods, and uh, the means seems to be run by a turtle, and the methods, the methods seem to get lost somewhere in the weeds, but uh, we will have polls there someday. Um, I, it was suggested to me to go when they went working on the town hall to go around with a picket sign that said polls for seniors, but uh, I was busy with some other things in my life. But, uh, we're working on it, we're trying to get it done. Um, I appreciate what the select board have done, what Representative Howard has done, um, and a few other contacts, yes. I just have a question. What's the contractor's schedule for uh, when they need permanent power? Do they have that aligned in their schedule? They, they, they do, but they're, they're not ready for it at this point. I don't disagree. I'm just curious what they say. And, <laughs> and, the, and the key is, and, and one of the things that we're obviously pushing for, is to have the utility done and ready before they're ready. Correct. Because if it isn't, then it's it's going to be pushed back at the owner because the utility comes under the owner's side. So um, they've got they've got a lot of their wiring into the. Uh, the electric room and the life safety room, they've got some of the, uh, the switch gear components delivered to the site, but they haven't gone through it and really started it yet. So they can have everything done to the panels, they can't have the secondaries because the primary's not in yet, right? So what's the plan if this gets pushed out further before we'll next meeting? We'll talk about it in a little while. I don't think we have anything to worry about. Okay, okay, I'm just getting nervous, that's all. Any other questions? We just need to keep the ball rolling with yeah. the utilities. No, I, I agree. I just don't want yeah. Okay, Stephen, okay. I think you can have the whole floor now. Yeah. How's okay. it keep going? Thank you, Jim. Um, good evening. Uh, so I'll start off, as usual, with the Senior Center progress over the last month. So since our last meeting, um, they've uh, completed the interior framing punch list. Uh, they restarted the siding. They had uh, uh, some backboarded materials for a while, so they had halted on that. They're back on the siding, uh, in particular the front entry area and, and uh, some sections out back and some miscellaneous areas. Pumping HVAC, fire protection, electrical roughings have continued. Uh, they've continued with the spray foam ins insulation. Uh, they've installed that and acoustical insulation. They've started the sheetrock and taping. They started door frame installation. Uh, they rough graded the parking lot, installed bollards. They continued the septic structures and some piping. Uh, the septic, I should say, field uh, base was approved last week by the Board of Health and the 
civil engineer. Uh, they did extend the power and the telecom duct banks as far as we could without being too close. Yeah, 10 feet is on. Yeah. Uh, Seaver is approximately 57% complete through January of, of 2024. And uh, as we talked about, National Grid received select board approval for the polls on the 15th. Uh, photo documentation, I'm uh, going back to the 16th of February. Uh, that's the front entry with the completed back and siding. Uh, the photo on the right is uh, uh, the completed siding at the rear of the building at the multi-purpose room bump out. I'm going to interrupt you for a sure. minute. Um, <clears throat> the previous two Seaver teams that were there, somehow they ran out of um, materials and these two areas are actually incomplete. This Correct. new SEVA team was given a punch, what I call a punch list, but a, a list of missing things or problems that we saw walking through the building. And they're working, I hate to say it, but they're working, I'm not gonna say diligently, but they're working on it and this was one of the bigger things. They were waiting for material, they got it up. Um, we're still working on the portico uh, we have to do some repainting and stuff on that, but the uh, back back porch uh, got the finished woodwork up there. So the new team, which has stayed the same for four weeks, cross my fingers, um, they're working. They're working diligently. They seem very uh, strong in what they want to do, and uh, we're hoping for the best. How was you're up again, Steve? How is the insulation underneath that roof? We were talking about that last time we were out there. Did it go smoothly? The, uh, the area that was missing? In the front. Remember underneath, we were wondering how they were going to do it with all the trusses in the way? Oh, yeah, to get a lift. It went yeah. smooth? Okay. Yeah, that, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, no, it, it took them some time. Out there. Yeah, I figured it would. Yeah. It must have been a small vertical lift. Yeah. Uh, next photo on the left is just a view of some bad insulation in the ceiling. Uh, photo on the right is uh, sheetrock installed on the, on the wellness room. And the sheetrock on the ceiling, that's not the actual ceiling, that's that's the fire battery ceiling. There will be a ceiling below that. And it, all, it all has to be taped in for the <coughs> fire crew. Um, it's going on to the 20th of February. You can see where they're doing some more work on that front entry, and that's the lift that they're using. So they got it snaked in through that. Mm. That truss. Photo on the right is uh, one of the guys doing the spray foam insulation in the multi-purpose room. I think the guy's standing on the cross rail. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think that was the best picture I had. I know, I'm trying to show worse. people in pictures. <laughs> uh, that's the last section of the building that they're, they're working on for spray foam is the multi-purpose room. All the other areas are done. Uh, next photo on the left is just a view of the sheetrock installation uh, facing uh, the, the lobby and the, and the cafe area. Photo on the right is sheetrock installation of the fire ceiling. I mentioned uh, the last couple photos ago. Photo on the right, sheetrock installation in the corridor facing the lobby. Uh, the, the grayer sheetrock um, it's on the wall. There is we, we do have um, abuse resistant uh, sheetrock that goes on the uh, the lower sections of the walls. Photo on the right is the sheetrock installation in the activity room uh, 126. And as we go on to the 22nd, uh, they started taping the, the walls of the fire ceiling. That happened to be the office wall 107. <coughs> And then the picture on the right is just some of the work that's been going on for the septic system structures at the rear of the building. Any questions on progress? So the schedule look ahead is complete the siding, soffit ceilings, and trim. Continue the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection roughings. Start the electrical switch gear. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, continue insulation in the multi-purpose room. Continue uh, sheetrock and taping. Start the prime coat of paint. Start ceramic tile. We're talking about installing the ship's ladder to the attic. 
Uh, they want to pour the concrete uh, for the front entry steps, the side surface area, and the exterior pads. Uh, continue the septic system, the field piping, sand, pumps, and internal controls. Continue underground site utilities, including the finishing the duct bank after the poles are installed, site lighting, and, and the drainage. And our, our latest um, in grid said that they were putting the poles in the week of <coughs> March 11th. Verizon, we're not sure of at this point. <coughs> the VCT, didn't we have something talk about moisture mitigation or something? Is that what Yeah, they're going to install it. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't see VCT, they just going to use it all. Well, they, yeah, no, we, they're not doing any of the resilient or, or carpet, they just want to get going on the ceramic, ceramic which also in has, the bathrooms, a, yeah. it has a, the kitchen. a barrier on it. Okay. okay. That way you can got toilet fixtures and Since all Since last month we were talking about testing, I didn't hear any more from yep. that's all I'm asking. Now that, I got resolved <laughs> <laughs> over a, a few emails and discussions. Oh, yeah. um, other issues, so the project <laughs> schedule is is, uh, is a big issue. Um, again, Seaver's current schedule, uh, which they submitted at the end of January, uh, still has substantial completion on April 21st and final completion on May 21st. Based on their percentage complete to date uh, through uh, through the end of January, we really don't anticipate that he was going to be able to meet that contractual completion date. Uh, and Bob sent them a notice letter on the 21st, which was last Wednesday, requesting a uh, recovery schedule, which is per the contract requirements, and acceleration of the project, which would include additional manpower overtime. So. This schedule is saying the 421. You're saying that's their latest schedule says that? Yes. So how does that compare to the month, the previous update? I mean, are they manipulating their, their durations? Are they manipulating their logic? Because how it seems like they keep staying on schedule, but they're losing time. If so. you go back and look through their schedule, and, and part, part of Ed's letter noted it, there's misdates in that schedule. Okay, good. So it's, it's, it's a... You know, it's a it's a faulty schedule. That's what I figured. It doesn't reflect <coughs> the actual activity. No, they're doing the typical contract of hocus pocus, hocus pocus witchcraft. You're working from the from situation the normal here in, 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 in filling dates. But this is the first one with the new crew, with the new leadership. Yeah. There. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, well I mean, they, they, they basically inherited everything that was before them. Yeah. Right. So. Um, but they must have reviewed it for accuracy and made some adjustments. Before the January thirty first. Yes and no. Yeah. They they don't know who put it together or how. They just okay. they worked it so that it would it yeah. would work. They manipulated okay. it. Gotcha. So you know at this point, as much as at, at one time we thought that they had a chance of making it. Um, they really the month of January it, they sort of lost it. Um, so in order to uh, you know reserve everybody's rights here, we, you, know, you have to put them on notice. Um, and where we don't, haven't gotten a response back yet, I mean, I did see some people working there late, but it wasn't, they were, <coughs> they were working outside. We need them, we need them working everywhere, but we need them working inside. Drywall is not on the critical path. Yeah. <coughs> it was supposed to have four tapers there today, they only had two. So. There's, there's miles of, of joints to be done. Um, so the only thing that is of concern, though, and, and we sort of just talked about it, is the National Grid and Verizon polls making sure that we get site utilities into the, into the project that doesn't affect their work. Now, as Ed said, based on where they are, I don't think it's. I don't want to say. Uh, we want we want the polls in as soon as possible. But if, if they're not ready tomorrow to do any kind of tie-ins, correct. So um, they're a month away. But ideally, let's forget about the power for a second. We get the uh, the rising pole in, and we can start getting the utilities pulling in there. Uh, service and getting them into into the building and, and looped into the to the IDF room. Once, once that room is complete. <coughs> yeah. Mark, I have a question. 
What's the town's uh, recourse? Is there liquidated damages or anything in the contract? There, there, there are. Yeah. And as we get further along, there'll be a, a, you know, potentially, we don't see some kind of turnoff, and, and even if we don't, we need to send out a letter saying, you've missed the date, you are subject to liquidated damages should the town want to assess them. And it's, 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 just, it's just part of the, the business end of it. But he's waiting for the recovery schedule. Yeah. Response yeah, we're not, we're Again, not. in theory, we're going to get a response in the next week or so, and in theory, something should turn around in the month of March. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What remains to be seen, um, but you have to give them the opportunity to respond. Correct. Um, it is highly unlikely that they're going to make the building by 421. Two Final completion of the building was 521, but that was also the date for the site, landscaping. And you can't stop that thing. Well, 421 yeah, also includes anyway. all of the hardscape outside for handicapped parking and access to public right away for egress. And there's a lot more to it than just the building. Correct. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done to obtain a TCO. And we, we figured, <coughs> not that they confirmed it, but our internal conversations that they were always looking at is strictly the building. And that they were going to do the rest, which you obviously you can't occupy a building if you don't have any accessibility and top coat of that. I mean, it's really, you know, besides landscaping, it may be a fence. Exactly. Right. Plantings. Yeah. yeah. Furniture. Right. And, and uh, we, we extended uh, the final completion because we wanted to make sure we were in season for plantings. Yeah, so May 15th. Oh. Um, so, and then it, it included, just included for, for your knowledge, the, the letter that I'm going to them. Uh, there's a couple attachments, but I just I, I just sent the letter. Uh, so any questions? Do you run into any roadblocks with, with Verizon International Grid? I mean, I know we, we already started that, but um, if if you need to select where to press on that, we will. Okay. Hundred percent. Yeah. Because I don't want to give personally. I don't want to give them any excuse to. <coughs> right. We want to be ready. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, so uh, change orders. Uh, we did have a new um, change order that was issued for uh, change order four for $3,417.11. It consisted of uh, PCCO 6R, which was a reconciliation of a CCD that we issued for uh, some switchgear panel board revisions. Big savings. So it was a $6.27 credit. I spent $500 to write that change order. <laughs> And BCCO 12R, uh, that was an owner request to put some ductwork in the medical storage room for 47303. Uh, BCCO 13 was to add the light fixtures over the pool table in the activity room. That was $3,385.95. And then uh, they've, been, they've been using water and it's still on the town meter, so we've been getting the, the readings. So we had two back charges for 358, 74, and 76, 86, and that will continue on. Similarly, if, if, if we were to get permanent power tomorrow, for some reason, it would be in the town's account, and, but we would just, we would just uh, back charge them for the use. So small change order. We do have some other potential change orders that are out there. Um, PCC05 was from the revisions to the fire service line, which right now is, is uh, at a $16,628 credit. Uh, PCCO11R, we got the second price for the sidewalk uh, that DOT is requiring along uh, Route 140, and it went from $99,000 to $135,000. Wow. So, um, mm -hmm. We did talk with Mike Units, and um, he's going to find out who um, Highway or the DPW used to do their road patch and, and road work under a blanket purchase agreement, and and see if they'd be interested in, in pricing that because we don't we can separate that as separate work from Seaver because they didn't have anything there to begin with, and and see if we can. Uh, Make that a little bit more reasonable. So, <clears throat> question on that. So that that's a request from DOT, right? It's not, requirement. Requirement. it's not in their contract. Does it impact occupancy? Is it something we can do later? 
Because what I'm nervous is getting in their way. It will, not them affect, it will not affect the TCO, but it will affect the close out of the permit, the okay. curb cuts. Okay. Because right, well, that was the condition of okay. the permit approval. Just, from yeah, DOT. From yeah. DOT. Yeah. From yeah. SDOT. Which could take a while. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, well we that was the idea of going to the, mm -hmm. the, the blanket contract, uh, um, you know, to yeah. see if they could, A, give us a better price, but B, get it done more expediently. The only thing that we, um, from our understanding, is that the site guy has released the curbing. So we might have to um, pay to reimburse them for, for that and just as those supply material. Yeah. But we wanted to release that because of potential long lead time for the grant. So this price is from the contractor? Yes. Okay, and you're going to see if we can get something better from the DOT vendor. Town. Town. The, town. Town. Well, yeah. And then see whether it's close. Right. I think you just have the contract. Well, again, so back to the whole schedule the issue. We're still concerned about them getting this large chunk of work <coughs> done in a timely fashion mm -hmm. to get us to the finish line. Because they'll just that's the other reason. They'll just tie it under the end and try and make offset any delays. If we take it away from them, they, they can't use it as an excuse. That's just my opinion. Well, its point is that maybe if. The town's uh, contractor does it, it'll be done quicker, and they won't have an excuse in the first place. Okay. Yeah. Exactly, stand yeah. Yeah. Or we Or we separate it from the project, and it has nothing to do with their completion. Yeah, they could be done and gone, and then we come in and do it later. We got to do our due diligence yeah. on, on getting the best price and making sure that it um, fits into the, uh, the schedule. Yeah. Okay. Other than that, the rest of them seem. Yeah, so just a few others that are, we're, we're working through them with them. Some we, we, we just recently got some are, are close, but uh, PCO, PCO 15 was for the electrical portion of the digital sign. That's at 13 for 57. PCO 16 was for uh, kitchen ductwood insulation for 5,182. PCCO 18 is for makeup, makeup air flu. For two thousand nine hundred forty-six dollars and fifty-six cents, ECCO nineteen is for the site work portion of the digital sign for eleven thousand six sixteen oh seven. Uh, PCCO twenty, which I believe we, we approved that uh, yes. today yes. for septic system upgrades for the board of health for three thousand three seventy three fourteen, and there were there's a PR that they haven't responded to for adding a split rail fence that. Just put a ten thousand dollar estimate on, just so that that can just sort of give a, a, a better update as, as where we are with our remaining contingency. So we got four change orders. We got the change order amount today of one hundred sixty-four eighty-one ninety-two. Are these numbers final except uh, five lot? No, they're not. They're not. Uh, but I, I'm sorry, twenty <coughs> but because that, 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 that's one. newly approved. The only We're one. still working. Because it's right there. Um, yeah, those those are those are potential. Well, that number four, I thought it was the same one. Yeah. So then we got uh, the potential change orders submitted, the potential change orders unsubmitted. Um, our construction contingency is one point one zero two five thirty four. So our worst case right now, if everything was approved as submitted, including the one thirty five, we've got seven seventy two one eighty eight. So again, our contingency is. Robust. Is the thirty-four seventeen just for PCCO twenty? No. Does that include that something else? <coughs> that's a, that's approved. That's approved. Change order number four. What's included? In that. that was back on the, the previous sheet. Yeah, this, yeah. Okay. With the credits. Yeah. That's yeah. That's good. The water credit. The um, the pool table lights. Hi, Steve. I don't see anything here. We made a motion at the last meeting to. <coughs> Pay for the brick for the back porch. The brick is that's that's in here now, because before it's in a change order, but I was I was taking it out of our contingency. It, it's it's back in, so it, it's included. It's, as, as it's in there that. somewhere. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Check it out. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's in point the point. Uh, I believe it's in change order three. Or is that? Like, so. so it's like sixty four, sixty six thousand. So. I think that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, any questions on senior center before I go to the town hall? Nope. 
Okay, seeing none, you can move on. Okay. Uh, North Town Hall, progress since last uh, meeting. Uh, wood framing punch list is ongoing. Uh, they've, they've whittled a lot of it down, but we still have a few more items. Middle interior wall framing is ongoing. Uh, the door frames uh, installation started on the first floor. Uh, the vaults installation has been ongoing. They started spray foaming and bat insulation. Uh, they started the sheet, uh, fire sealing sheet rocking. Windows and AVB have been completed. Roof underlayment is completed and shingles are about, I'd say they might be 85% now because they were working today. Uh, the TPO roof membrane uh, is installed at the main, uh, main entry roof. Uh, siding and, and trim are continuing. Uh, fire protection, plumbing, HVAC, and electrical roughens have uh, continued and will be for a while. The septic field installation currently has been on hold just due to weather. Uh, transformer wiring ha has been installed by National Grid. Uh, Tempe is ongoing. And Emil Pond is about 32% complete through uh, the end of January. So photos, um, 216, that's the inside of the clerk's six hour rated vault. And I, I'd like to make a comment. I think uh, Lucia will be absolutely ecstatic with this. I, I have not seen what she has in the old town hall, but I believe it's an old stand up safe. <laughs> and that vault is as big as this room. Oh, not quite, but it's large. <laughs> Half of this room. Okay, it's long and narrow. This is fat and squat. What's nice about the system is it's modular. Right. So it's pre-engineered. Um, if you see that picture on the right, it's pre-engineered. Yeah. 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 There's a piece of sheet metal in the picture on the left that faces in, and the outside is expanded metal lath that holds ceramic insulation between them. It's the same insulation that they used on the tiles on the space shuttle. Wow. Oh, wow. So that's what gives it its integrity and then there's a horizontal plank which hasn't been installed yet the picture on the left that comes across to form the ceiling and then the whole thing gets covered in sheetrock on the inside then there's also steel columns and beams underneath it so that if the building actually caught on fire and collapsed in the vault would remain intact and the assessors and treasurer's vaults which they share a vault that's probably almost three times as big as this room there it is on and the, they have on separate the right. it's on the second floor and he'll probably wow. get to it it has two separate entrances so the treasurer comes to one side and the assessors come from the other but again it's, there's, there's a picture it's a, of the beams that, that Ed was just talking it's about. a this huge is, job yeah. improvement this is the treasurer's and assessors slash rest of the, the building They'll be. It's divided on the inside with the, with the wire mesh. So the security. A, yeah. So there are, there are two doors, but th those are the beams that Ed was talking about. And this is a much much larger vault than the uh, town clerk. As we did with the community center, will we have an opportunity to, to do a, a walkthrough as uh, safely at some point at the town hall? Yeah. Maybe next meeting before next meeting. That would be good. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, could, we could probably do that. 30th of February? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't say the 29th. Yeah. There is a 29th. Oh, whenever it works for everybody. Yeah. I'd like to see it while yeah. it's still yeah. open like that. It's yeah. still system. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, then we would, we would want to do it next next week because they're going to they're going to I move. will get back to you. They're going to be moving quickly with she okay. I mean, I'll, I can go with any any night of the week if anybody wants to make it before next meeting. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right time special, for special, day. special day. I'll let, you mark. I'll let Steve get back to me and I'll get back to you. Yeah. I'll have him give us two dates so you'll have a choice of two okay. dates. Right. Perfect. Yeah, thanks. Because I'm not doing well. I can't come on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and the other person can't come on Tuesday, Thursday. <coughs> the good news you get a choice of two dates, so you don't, so you don't have to climb ladders or anything. Oh, right. You'll come to the ribbon cutting in uh, Fourth of July. So go ahead, Steve. So uh, getting back to this, uh, just the photo on the on the left is them installing ceiling insulation on the first floor. <laughs> and the photo on the right is the larger vault. Um, 
Next photo on the left is uh, the spray foam insulation under the roof deck. Uh, <coughs> photo on the right is the siding, which is in its unfinished state. Now I'd like to add, it's I've had green. a couple of comments about whether we've got a discount for all the samples that they had left over, <laughs> because it's multicolored. It's going to be painted white. The building is, the completed building will be white. It's got a nice rustic look. Yeah. Is it the same material in the senior center? No. No. Okay. no. That's, this is the concrete. This is the fly um, ash. Yeah. Yeah, this is a composite with, where, where that's, that's uh, cement, private cement at the senior center. This is, this is a different material. Still, it's still a, like a no rock material. Yeah. Um, going back, uh, moving on to like the, the 20th of February, we've got um, second floor framing it along the, the main corridor. Photo on the right is insulation on, on the ceiling. Looks of the second like floor. they did a better job of insulation on this one than the ceiling side. Down. I have a little bit of yeah. more room. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's they're using more. a different, <coughs> different it's material. Clean looking material because it's white. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot more open too. Yeah, yeah. Access is there. Yeah, again, uh, picture on the on the left oh, is the uh, spray foam insulation at the roof eaves, and then on the right, uh, the foam and bat insulation. Again, on the second floor. Right. Uh, photo on the left, just progress on the second floor. Photo on the right is up in the attic space where they're foaming the entire entire deck area. Um, they want to keep the snow on the roof in the winter. Uh, they what? They want to keep the snow on the roof in the winter. <laughs> yeah, they don't. They don't stay on the roof. Yeah. Access insulation. Yeah. Uh, then the photo on the on the left is the front elevation. Photo on the right is the west elevation and facing the library. Then the photo on the left that should say the uh, south. <coughs> the west southwest elevation, and then the photo on the right is installation of the sheetrock fire barrier at the first and second floor. Again, there'll be a ceiling below this, and this will all be taped. So, uh, Emil Connor's schedule look ahead is complete the interior uh, metal framing, complete the vaults. Installation, which should be wrapping up soon. Uh, continue with spray and, and bat insulation. Continue with sheetrock fire sealing. Continue with the fire protection, plumbing, HVAC, and electrical roughings. Complete the roof shingles. Continue with siding and trim. And then continue on with the septic system. Uh, other issues, we don't really have too many other issues right now. The, the furniture pricing has been received from WB Mason and is under review. Uh, we actually meeting with uh, with Mike and maybe Jen uh, and, and Chris tomorrow to uh, to review an update on the furniture. And right now, uh, Emma Connor is on schedule, and we're confident that they're yeah, meeting their schedule at this point. So. I will mention that um, myself and Steve have uh, gone by the site on Saturdays and Sundays uh, a couple of times and caught, not caught, I should, people sure. were working on the site. Um, so I think the subcontractors are much more diligent and it's probably because of the contractor pushing them and everything else. They're a little bit more diligent on this site at doing stuff. I know we, we got 13 days of cloudy weather with a couple of two-inch snowstorm blizzards that they canceled school. Um, and they couldn't work on the roof, but we had the ice and water on the roof. Um, and we had some water in the building that uh, got taken care of. But uh, the, dil the due diligence on this job appears to be a little bit, although we did find people at the other site, but that drives me crazy because last Tuesday's construction meeting, I sat next to the OPM for the contractor, <coughs> and he's writing down stuff we're talking about, 
and Steve and Ed and Bob mentioned having four tapers and he wrote down four tapers and we haven't seen four tapers since last Tuesday so somebody's not pushing and the other thing that that's a little bit um, deceiving is just the safety which has nothing to do with the construction but on the town hall site we seem to have to keep reminding people about wearing helmets and vests on, I mean on the senior center site on the town hall site not so much except the roofing guys like to run around like monkeys with nothing on because there's nothing overhead. We have no big cranes or anything. But they are tied off. So. Yeah, but they are tied. They are tied off. They were, it was commented the first couple of weeks to that subcontractor, and uh, today, today I went by after an activity here at the senior center, and there was four or five guys up there uh, roofing around the uh, lightning rods and a few other places that had their act together. So. And most of the time they quit at 2.30 and I think it was like 3.30 by the time we got out of here. So some people for the subcontract crafter did stay around. I know the siding guy has, has stayed if, if, because it's getting light, it's staying light later. Right. And the vault guys have, have worked late because they're, they're from out of state. Yeah, they, they come in and work four 10-hour days, yeah. then go back to Pennsylvania, yeah. Yeah. get some more pretzels and then come back up here. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. Okay, so as far as change orders, we, we issued change order number six for $31,207.67, which was comprised PCO 21R fiber optic and coax revisions for $8,047.60, PCO 29 for added EV charging stations. For $22,303.20. And PCO 30 is the vectorization of the town seal for $856.88. That's essentially, we did not, the town did not have a digital file that was, that was precise enough, clear enough to, to make a plaque out of. So we, we decided we'll, you know, it was a toss up which sign that he used. And trust me, the town does not have one. I went to the fire truck subcontractor, I went to the water department subcontractor, I went to the town hall, I went to three different people who do signs for the town. Um, I spent probably 30 hours trying to find a vectored um, town seal and we don't have one. And Brian, you have a question. Well, Jim and I talked about this, but we went through this process of vectorizing this town seal. Why did we keep the same seal? Why is the town hall not on this hill instead of the church? That's 300 years old. That was probably the center of the universe 300 years ago. I think it's because I'm going to answer that question. A lot quicker we just made a new seal. If Mike's still on there, he can interrupt me. But I'm going to answer the question is the town seal that they have is satisfactory for the generalized use that they have on the side of a cruiser, on the side of a fire truck. It's not so bad. But when you go to have a bronze plaque made, those people, it's like the difference of getting a uh, ring out of a quarter machine and going to a jeweler. You know, the one out of the quarter machine is not cut as good as the one out of the jeweler. Oh, oh I get that. I just don't understand. And your wife was probably happy we, with the one out we, of the quarter. We didn't decide to update the seal yeah. since we're going through this process, that's all. Well, now you have it forever. <laughs> They'll you know, know where to get it. it. Well, what happens if that church burns down? Now we get a seal of, you know, Well, it, it'll, nothing. for only 900 bucks, it'll cost a lot more money to go through yeah. the process of changing the seal, yes. the town meetings, yeah. and open hearings, and all that. No, you just move forward. You don't have to back up. I'm just, I'm just saying. It was suggested we go like the school department and just go with a purple end. There you go. But, uh... <laughs> well, the Lancer. Put the Lancer on. If we're only worried about nine hundred dollars, I think we got a problem. Moving on. So the, uh, the change order summary. So we've got six change orders that have been issued to date, totaling one hundred twenty-six thousand eight hundred and sixty-three dollars and five cents. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, open items. We've got uh, one that was uh, uh, being reviewed for uh, three thousand six hundred and seventy-six. 
and we got an estimate on, on another one that hasn't been uh, submitted yet for a thousand. Our construction contingency that we carried uh, in the budget was eight eight forty nine six forty. So again, uh, if, if we approve everything, which again is not much that's open right now, we're still at seven eighteen one hundred and ninety five cents. So, so the only difference that we know possibly is going to be one up a little bit, right? Potentially. And, and we're working through that, but we, don't, we, we have a soft cost contingency okay. too. But so it's not built into that. I mean, ultimately, you move stuff where you need it. Exactly, but I'm saying it's not built into that number yet. So. No, no. And that's that's it. Cool. What were the completion dates for the town hall? The schedule? Scheduled. Scheduled. I think it's August, isn't it? It's just as August. Yeah. Um, it's August, August, and then the final is November 12th. I think so. Well, because phase two is a little bit more. It's the area around the fire station yeah, of finishing that parking lot in front. Taking down the Knocking food down pantry. Food. But the town hall could be occupied while that's still going on. Oh, it has to be, yeah. yeah. Any other questions? No surprises. I do have a question for you, Jim. Have you got any more requests? Uh, and are they properly being followed through the the, um, the protocol that we have set as far as going through the select board and the town manager and copying the email on it? Outside of these two projects I'm talking about. No, I. one of the three select board meetings that I went to, I presented the eight projects and told them that they should go to the whatever, the major projects committee or whatever it is. Um, and I listed the, the eight projects and the ball's in their court to do what it, to reactivate that committee and let them start digging because I know the, the library parking project is going to come up, although it, I don't think it's going to be over $100,000 or whatever the limit is for the capital improvement committee. But that was one of the things that I did bring up. Every select board meeting, I bring up that we have a vacancy, that you know it's a good time to come on because we're almost done, so there's not that many headaches. Um, and if you want to get your feet a little wet in town politics, uh, this is the place to be if you can put up with my personality. So, <laughs> um, so Steve, if you remember the, the joint um, committee you guys had with the uh, school committee, to appoint me um, about a year and a half ago. Yeah. There was a lot of discussion from the school committee that um, they didn't know about the opening in, uh, enough advance notice and they wish they had been able to kind of um, go through their uh, channels that maybe, you know, people that are uh, aligned to the, the school department if they wanted to be on this uh, building committee. And um, it was kind of, they seemed a little, um, uh, disturbed about the fact that they didn't have enough lead time. But ironically, it's been a year and a half and it's been how many months since Bob resigned as well and we haven't had anybody step forward. So I, I just want I mention it in case you guys talk to the school committee again for any of your joint meetings well, leading up to the yeah, I, I, will, I wasn't bringing up yet. Yeah. I know they're aware of this opening. I know that, that okay, they're good. aware of it. Um, good. It's, it's not just this committee, it's every committee in town. We're having such a hard time filling any positions. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you've seen, you know, how many people are pulling papers for the election coming up. I mean, uh, there's going to be non-contested seats. We're going to have to appoint people. So it's, yeah, it's gonna yeah, be, yeah. Um, yeah, but I no, I, it's, a good, it's a good point. I, will I, saw, up, I yeah. thought it was interesting that they made such a fuss out of not knowing about it, and then nobody stepped forward, and there's, there's been openings for a year. And That's and politics, 100%. Yeah. I, <laughs> That's I have not met with the school committee itself, <laughs> but I meet, like, once a month with Wade, and he knows every time I meet, I mention we're one short. And I meet with the new superintendent of the schools because I'm still interested on how the athletic field is and the maintenance and the, quote, income we're supposed to be making millions off of mm -hmm. for renting it out. So I still connect with those people probably once every three or four weeks. And I do. I, I mention it to everybody. I mentioned it at the men's breakfast. I mention it at... You know, whatever I go to, um, you know, I think the word's out there, although I think it's a fallacy of people not being informed. I think it's people don't want to be informed. You can bring them to water, but you can't make them drink. 
Mm -hmm. So no matter how much you publicize everything, people think we've got a multicolored town hall. Um, <laughs> no, the water department doesn't know there's a building committee. I mean, I can go through a million scenarios that I don't care how well informed you are. Um, if you want to be informed, you can be informed. If you don't want to be informed, you certainly cannot be informed. You don't want to sit through this, although they only put the building committee on like two days, and then it disappears. The school committee and basketball games run for like three weeks. I'm sick of watching the same basketball and volleyball games, and I think some of the government meetings, but that's a comment for another time. And I'm getting kicked under the table by my clerk. Does anybody want to make a motion to no. adjourn? No, next meeting. Next oh, meeting. Oh, next meeting. Uh -huh. March 25th. Yes. Yeah, it should be all right. <laughs> I'm going to stop <laughs> bringing my calendar. <laughs> if we do, that's a good date. If we do go on a, a walkthrough of the uh, town hall, we don't need to post that, do we? We're not going to be making any decisions. It's just going to be informational. Yeah, just to be careful, we can post. I think okay. we'll, we'll post it, but there'll be no agenda. Yeah, okay, that's good. So just keep that in mind. Although I may, I may want to give a 20 minute speech. We want to do one with the select board too, so we can maybe do it the same day. Make it easier for everybody. We'll get a turnstile and we can get one from the MBTA and uh, stop charging a dollar for so people to go through. So, Jim, would, would you notify the select board once we get a date? Set for that? Well, I have to? Yes, yeah, I you, will. you just asked us to. Sure, I will. <laughs> um, okay. Um, the 25th? I'm sorry. Yes, the 25th. Yeah. I made a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Everybody.